speaker is Dr. Rodolfo uh, Lugo Saldana. He is uh, he is a renowned in, uh, ENT specialist from Monterrey, Mexico, with more than 20 years of surgical experience. He is a visiting professor and coordinator in uh, countless international courses, mainly in sleep surgery, rhinology, and facial surgery. He is a famous teacher and an author of many scientific reports, articles, and a book on surgical management in snoring and sleep disordered breathing. Currently, he is a president of the Ibero-American Sleep Surgery Society, Cybex, and the director of Ronco Donman uh, Monetary Sleep Breathing Disorders Private Clinic. Today, he will share with us his experience in the field of tongue-based surgery, which is his subspecialty. Hello, my name is Rodolfo Lugo Saldana from Monterrey, Mexico. I'm an otolaryngology and a head neck surgeon. I will talk about the ablative surgical procedures in OSA and obstructive sleep apnea, apnea patients in base of tongues. I'm I uh, don't have any disclosures. Uh, we talk about our experience in this uh, interesting area in, in the sleep surgery. I, I was from Monterey City. It's in the northeast of my country. It's the second major city. Uh, five or six million people live here. Uh, the nickname is the Mountain City. And, you know, I work here in a public hospital with a sleep clinic there and the academic uh, programs uh, with a fellowship. And I have a private clinic too. Uh, the name is Ronquido Monterey, what means a snoring Monterey. And uh, it's a rhinology clinic too. And I, we work in the two concepts of medicine. Some of the pictures and graphics from this uh, lecture is from our books or manuals in the sleep surgery. And the compilation techniques is in the last manual. Is in Spanish. Is this book uh, is uh, talking about the tongue surgeries techniques in the sleep apnea. The most important issue in this kind of surgeries is the obstruction pattern. You know, if you have a, a tongue obstruction. You need to to see how quantity obstruction has in the tongue and uh, how paper or uh, how the, the the relationship with the epiglottis, epipharynx, lingual tonsils and the, the, the tongue, the, the, the tongue right now. You can see in this video the floor of the palate and a lot of obstruction there. But if you see after the palate, you can uh, introduce the tip on the scope there. You can see the obstruction in the uh, base of tongue. You can see the relationship with the epiglottis. And I we uh, point this obstruction in 75% of obstruction of the, of the pharynx, all right? Okay, in this uh, another patient with a uh, bias of tongue obstruction, we can see the, the, the difference uh, between and this kind of obstruction with uh, uh, lingual tonsils hypertrophy. It's a huge uh, uh, quantity of, of lingual tonsils there. Uh, a lot of obstruction and with a, a base of tongue uh, totally uh, blocked or 100%. We tried to put some oral appliance there on some positional therapy, but the obstruction is still going there. Is that the reason we we suggest the resection of the base of tongue in this patient with a 100% obstruction? These are three different uh, patterns of obstruction. Uh, you can see uh, obstruction in in the left or video. Uh, yeah. You can see the obstruction in the, in the in the video. In the middle is obstruction in the base of tongue, at least 100%. You can see the palate flutter, but it's uh, 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 joined with obstruction in the base of tongue. And in, in the last video, you can see the obstruction in 75%. The anatomy is one of the most important issues is to, to know the anatomy of the neurovascular boundless, uh, boundless there and the relationship with the lingual nerve and the, all the safe lingual zone is very important 
the lingual artery, the lingual vein, it's in the deep part of the, uh, the base of tongue. Uh, the, uh, the, the bundle is in the lateral part, in the inferior part of the tongue. Is that the reason we need to keep in the midline of the base of tongue, of the dorsum of the tongue? It's, 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 it's so important to keep the midline. Is that the reason one of my tips is mark your tongue with a pencil, surgical pencil there, and it's very important to put uh, the borders in the dorsum of the tongue to see where we are. It's, uh, it's very easy to, to lateralize without, with, without note it. And in, during the operation, we, we can uh, go in uh, to side or lateralize and we can injure the neurovascular area with the tip of the wand. And that's the reason we need to keep in the midline. And always start in that area in the middle of the tongue to, 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 to make a nice uh, resection uh, point. You can see there, we can start with a cold blade incision and uh, start our surgery in that area. We will talk about five techniques we can use uh, with ablative devices. Uh, uh, the, the first one is the volumetric reduction of the base of tongue. The wet procedure with lingoplasty, the direct coagulation in midline without a tunnel, without tunnelization, tunnelization, and the smile and modification, the classic smile surgery, and the amyglosectomy uh, with open, like, a, like an open smile. We, we don't use the robotic surgery here in Mexico, and the, uh, I don't, and we don't use, I don't have the approval for the suspension techniques. And uh, available in our country because we have uh, 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 some restrictions with our uh, coffee priests, is some of the uh, like a, a Mexican FDA regulations company. You can see the first uh, technique is the reduction volumetric uh, from base of tongue with uh, the, one of the ones we uh, use in turbinate uh, is the reflex 45. Is, uh, uh, it's no ablative, it's uh, only reduction. It's a tissue tissue reduction fibrosis uh, uh, with this technique. We can perform in a solus procedure in the office with under local anesthesia, or we can perform in with a multinevel concept in some surgeries we need to ha uh, remove a little a quantity of base of tongue. If you have a mineral obstruction, you can think in this kind of procedure. It's very easy to do. You need to put uh, six or eight in that area of the base of tongue with the hand piece. Uh, I prefer using seven or two night in ablation mode. And, and we can uh, start with six or eight points in that area. In this video, you can see the, the, the way uh, we put the, the insert the tip of the wand and waiting for 11 or 15 seconds to uh, uh, introduce the energy in the tissues of the muscle of the base of tongue. The other technique is the, the wedge procedure. It's a lingual plastic. We can open the midline of the tongue and we can resect and direct view the tissue on that area. We can use uh, some different kind of hand piece. The One of the ones is the EVAC 17. It's very nice to use and it's a, a, a big, a big uh, tip. Um, you can use the ProSize. Uh, it's a very nice uh, tool too. I prefer when I will perform a basal tone and epiglottic surgery, we prefer the precise and we have uh, the EPAC-17 only uh, tissue, soft tissue resection techniques. You can see in this video how we open the, the basal tongue and we can put in, insert the people they want and we can resect uh, all the tissue there and make a big, big space there you can see in this uh, video how we can sponsor the area and we can touch all this space we can reduce after the surgery. Uh, 
This is another video with the ablation technique. We can open the spurs of the muscle and we can uh, resect and dissect all the tissues with the tip of the wand and make a, a big uh, resection a, a cavern there like a tunnel, but open tunnel. Okay. After the surgery, we can put some stitches there to close in layers the tongue with no resection of the mucosa. You can see the mucosa of the tongue is preserved and this is uh, one of the reasons the pain is not an issue in that kind of techniques. And we finish the surgery with three or four or five t t stitches. Uh, we insert a local anesthesia, previous the incision, we wait for eight minutes to the latency of the light of the for local, and we can insert, uh, uh, we can uh, use uh, an initial uh, uh, part of the surgery with a cold blade incision and open the space. Uh, after that, we can resect the muscle without problem. The another technique is the direct coblation in midline. It's the direct coblation is no preservative mucosa technique. It's directly with mucosa, with muscle tissue and all the area uh, stuff in that area. Uh, yes, uh, we, uh, we use local after the previous the surgery and uh, wait for some minutes and and start the resection. In this video, we can see the the resection uh, pattern we can uh, we can do that we can do in this procedure you can say put the tip of the the wonder resect the mucosa the tissue control the embryo there so a lot of bleeding you can control with coagulation uh, mode with the tip of the wand and this is uh, you calculate all the tissue you need to resect depends on the obstruction they have. The the classic smile is a special surgery. It's the first surgery report uh, using coagulation in this uh, kind of patients. It's a pediatric patients with uh, Down syndrome and beckett wiedemann syndrome is some macroglossia patients or no real macroglossia like in Down syndrome, but they have that problem with the bone growing, uh, in the face bone growing, but they have a, a, a problem with the base of the tongue. We uh, use the device, the coagulation device, and this is the steps we can perform in these patients. These are eight steps patients. We uh, step uh, a smile technique, is uh, exposure of the base of tongue, uh, use local, mark your borders to boundaries of the anatomy, keep in the midline, open a, a little incision with a cold blade, uh, is, uh, make a space with a clamp, and put the tip of the handpiece, the back 17 in this case, uh, in Sumuco's uh, concept to make the tunnelization, to make the recession of the base of tongue. We have a rule there, the 45 rule is uh, no make a hole there. It's a problem to make a deep hole. You need to skip into mucose uh, aspect. No, no, uh, no deep in there because if you have a more uh, deep in problem there with the tip of the handpiece, you can make a big problem in the floor of the mouth and that is a very dangerous. Uh, we suggest the ablation between seven or nine, the coagulation in four. And you can make an endoscopic control there. After the smile, tunnel session, classic uh, coagulation surgery, you can put a zero degrees endoscope there to see the resection area. You can see in this video the way of you can resect all that tissue and coagulate it in the all the space you resect. And this is the tunnel and the dorsal of the tongue. You can see the tunnel and you can go to the back space. It's a very wide resection area. And that uh, virtual space you can, in the healing process of this patient, you can reduce all that stuff and it's a, a lot of, or, or quantity of resection area in the basement.
the results in an X-ray image in patients with a section of the base of tongue, you can see the difference between the pre-surgical view and the post-surgical view. And you see the another image in post-ablation ethnic patients, yes, uh, it's a palisurgery to patient, but you can see in the dorsum of the base of tongue and the tongue, you can see all that uh, fibrosis or retraction area. You don't need to use the the the, 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 the open the mouth. You can see in normal view the resection and like a cradle, little cradle effect there with the reduction area in the base of tongue. This is the paper, original paper from Stephen Mature and, and Captain Eric Mayer, and the Coroner Eric Mayer, the a pediatric ENTs. When he reports this technique, they report this technique in pediatric patients with that syndromes. We have experience with the, the pediatric patients with uh, Down syndrome and back with Wiedemann syndrome too. Uh, is you know we need to oral nasotracheal uh, intubation, the exposure of the base of tongue, and they put the tip of the device there, the handpiece, the Epic 17 in this case, to resect the the area. In this but video you can see all the resect we can do with this technique. Uh, right now we use a modified smile operation. We don't use the classical tunnelization with a blind uh, pattern because it's very dangerous to, to make a, a, a hole there and go blind. Is that the reason we open and prefer a view indirectly, view the resect of the tongue. And with this technique, it's not bleeding and you make a very, very uh, nice and safe result. The post-surgical recovery is very nice, it's very quickly. We don't need a tracheal, tracheostomy. We don't need to go to intensive care unit. Uh, it's only uh, to normal recovery room. And going to diet uh, after that, it says you only perform a tongue surgery in this kind of patients. The diet is normal first day after surgery. This is a Down syndrome patient. And we can see at the back with Wiedemann syndrome patient with a big, big macroglossy problem with the, the problem with the uh, close of the mouth mouth and it's that problem with the mouth is if the patient can't uh, have occlusion there uh, in that uh, age the pediatric patient has a lot of a problem with that issues and uh, four months post-surgical you can see an uh, a almost normal uh, patient with a uh, a nice occlusion of this mouth. This is the outcomes of the ablative surgical procedures, the coblation, the midline lysectomy, the submucosal lingualposty, the tongue band suspension and radiofrequency reduction. You know, you can see the difference in the, in the outcomes. You can see the, the varia variables in the saturation index and the apnea, hypopnea index. Another kind of surgery in that area, the hypopharynx, with the, we can use the ablative uh, surgical devices with the epiglottis. And it's need to see what type of obstruction or epiglottis we have. You can see a uh, uh, lateral lateral, it's one of the most complicated obstruction patterns we have. And I prefer the 75% resection there uh, or almost a uh, uh, totally epiglottic. <laughs> The last epilotis with a floppy one, we need to reset and make some space there with apexia with anterior epilotis rigid. We can reset the tip of the epilotis to make a nice space there and apexia with possible more. And another uh, uh, obstruction, anterior obstruction there. Uh, with uh, a lot of a uh, a volume in the base of tongue. We need to make a partial resection of the free edge of the epiglottis and make a, a reduction of the base of tongue in the same operation. This is a graphic with uh, uh, the way we can resect the, the, the free edge of the epiglottis. Uh, we can uh, resect any quantity of, of epiglottis depends of the 
construction pattern with a 25% recession, a 50% or 35%. In this video, you can see the tip of the one, the FX17, reduce the cartilage space there in that epilaris. And you can see it's very safe surgery without bleeding, and you make, make a, a, a big space there. And after the surgery, it's very important to see the vocal cord there, the, uh, all the integrity of the airway uh, nah, uh, is, 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 is going nice, and the thing is, 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 is easy and good to perform. In this kind of structure, the lateral lateral, we need to put a, a, a lot of uh, resection there. It's almost a totally epilectomy or something, more of 75% of it. With obstruction, you look the lateral lateral obstruction there. So, typical this obstruction in the inspiration mode, look the obstruction. Okay, and we can perform a totally endoscope uh, surgery there to see the difference after a post-surgical, previous and after. This is the important because if you have a concept to epilectectomy for better compliance with CPAP, it's a nice, the CPAP compliance is going higher because we don't have any problem with the solution there, or in the concept of the multi-level surgery with the epilectectomy too. How to avoid complications, select your patient with extreme care, practicing to the don't skip steps, follow the parameters of that technique. It's very important to make a nice selection of your patient. It's very important to go to workshops, to get training, some image of the the big tongue is so similar to human, and you can produce, you can some do some exercise with that. Hace unos kind años, of unos and tips and pairs, nasal tracheal intubation, side opener without tongue depressor, circle marking, lingual central retraction, two exposure, above lateralization. The 45 degrees rule to make a submucose space there and no make holder, always palpating or the tip of the one with the finger, the tip of your finger. This is very important. In conclusion, the ablative surgical procedures is no statistical difference between robotic surgery and plasma devices procedures. The multi surgical procedures in subtissues uh, demonstrate a significant improvement in reduction on the sleep apnea index. In conclusion, we can perform the ablative surgical procedures in that area or we look for the hypopharyngeal area. Don't forget the base of tongue, the basis of the hypoglossal implant. Final tip, if you see a base of tongue obstruction, treat it. This is the most important point. Thanks for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Um, thank you, Mateo, for the invitation, and I Keep here for the question and answer session. It's uh, my contacts, and uh, I hope to see you in person soon uh, after this pandemic uh, COVID times problems end. Thank you very much. Uh, Rodolfo, thank you for your great lecture. Uh, I can see that you really have a vast experience with tongue based surgery. Uh, the thing I want to ask you is, uh, how do you deal with uh, post-operative pain? Uh, because I guess uh, it must be quite uh, big after uh, this kind of uh, procedure. Yes. How do you deal with uh, pain? Yes, uh, Matek, thank you. Uh, well, I, I can see some difference between the, the, the techniques uh, with the preservative mucosa techniques, you know, when you make an incision and, 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 and realize a procedure under or the submucose concept only, when you uh, make a, a, a procedure with a mucosa resection, to, like the directly hemiglosectomy, yes, we have a lot of more pain there. And this, I, 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 I can make two differences. When you preserve the mucosa, and you make a submucosa uh, resection, 
or open the midline of the tongue, uh, make the recession of the muscle tissue and uh, close the layers of the tongue with mucosa, intact mucosa, you have a minor pain there. But always in all our sleep surgeries, we make a, we have a protocol with pain management, multimodal, multi-protocol, seven days of that uh, protocol of pain management. And the thing is going well with that protocol of, of, of painkillers there. But if you preserve the mucosa, you have minor problems with the pain after the resection of the basal tongue. Yes. Is that the, the, the concept we can see in, this, in these surgeries? Okay, so uh, leave uh, as less uh, wound open as uh, possible. Uh, what about the diet? Uh, how long you keep them on liquids? Uh, do you use any topical analgetics? Uh, I, I, we yes. read uh, an article about topical application of uh, yes. 3 mc Do you ever use any topical uh, medicine? We uh, suggest a liquid diet for five days after surgery and uh, semi soft, uh, semi solid and soft uh, meals uh, diet in 10 days after that. So, one, two weeks of soft diet. But the most important issue is uh, uh, seven days of vocal uh, rest, you know, no, no uh, talking after the surgery because the, the movement of the muscles in that area. Uh, you know, is that the reason they have a lot of pain after surgery? Is that there is uh, one of the most important facts is the vocal rest after the surgery seven days. Okay. Thank you. So uh, we are all aware that in order to have a good surgical success, uh, we need a good patient selection. What would be your uh, pre-treatment uh, yes. diagnostic workup? in order to achieve this good selection. Yes, yes. Uh, well, this is more the, one of the most important is in the next circumference, anatomic issues. It's a, the next circumference is very important for me. In, in, in males, it's a, a 45, a 46 border there. In females, uh, 43 and um, um, 42 cent uh, centimeters in the perimeter uh, circumference of the neck. Uh, the body mass index is important too. Is the 30, 32 is our border. Uh, more than that size, we have a lot of situation there because the neck, the problem with the neck is the growing, you know. This can grow in, go out and start to, to to pressure all the the uh, contain in the neck and this is the problem is that the reason the next circumference and the body mass index well uh, when we see uh, in the CPAP depression a high pressure level uh, we we note uh, it's a more complex collapse uh, situation there, there. In, and more in the hypofarynx area is that the reason we can see in the level of the pressures of the CPAP trail and uh, we can uh, imagine, ima uh, we can translate that in a more complex uh, obstruction and we can see uh, uh, it's just a very good uh, uh, suggestion to make uh, some hypofarynx surgery there in basic context. But the selection is the most important uh, fact in that kind of patients, yes. Thank you. Uh, Rodolfo, how, how often do you do it uh, okay. as a multi-level surgery? Uh, do you ever do it as a standalone procedure? Uh, how do you address multi-level obstructions? I can, I can tell you when I perform in the first years uh, uh, propofol slip endoscopy, I have more operations in you know, uh, we can uh, 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 accept or see the concept if you have a, a obstruction in basal tongue with precedence. This is a lot of obstruction in the real sleep, I think. But uh, yes, it's, it's, it, you see a lot of obstruction there in patients with all, all of the 
all the the option we have and the patient is don't want it and metabolic and anatomic is is a nice patient uh, we we suggest a multi-level surgery uh, thinking in, in after the nose you know you can perform a nose surgery too a pharynx palate hypopharynx too yes yes it's, it's very common to 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 put the nose in the multi-level surgery patients